Good morning, everyone. Before we get started with this one, I just want to take a moment and say this one comes with the stand. It's identical to the one that we looked at last time. So it's the same. I, I didn't take it out and put it together because I had to return this one. You'll see why. But what I really wanted to speak to you guys about is I highly recommend you stick around to the end of the video to see the skit. It's right before the credits at the end. And I highly recommend that you wait around and look at that before you comment. It's just a word to the wise. But my father used to tell me, I don't believe in a word to the wise because it's rarely the wise ones that really need advice. What's up, everybody? It's your favorite psychopaths, favorite nerd. And today we are looking at Machine Robo, Bike Robo, or as we commonly call him, Psych Hill. And he comes with a couple of accessories. These uh, extra bits, which for the most part are just kind of parts forming thing for bike mode. I can't find a use for them in robot mode. It's possible that I just can't figure it out. I will admit that. And he comes with these two wheels. This one pegs in quite well. This one it could be much better tolerance to just sort of well now of course it's not but take my word for it it's been falling out all morning and it's like a, a a rubbery plastic it might just be straight rubber around the wheel but it's either way it's it's a good choice whatever it is it feels good and then he comes with this axe no pain on it uh he does hold it just fine so that's that's all good and then him. So let's get the elephant in the room right out of the way. He came with two right arms. And the reason why I know this is because you see the way that the elbow joint works there where the piece that goes from the bicep into the elbow is rounded there at the bottom. So you get a nice full bend past 90 degrees. On this one, it's the opposite. So if you have it spun around, square end no bend at all so they gave me the wrong hand but I'm just gonna have to get a replacement but I figured before I did I would go ahead and uh, show you guys what's up with them you know I don't think it's that uh, big of a deal in terms of of judging the figure so I think it's fine in, in terms of telling you guys what's up with it just know that probably it will come assembled correctly one would hope so we have a nice silver finish on the face, and we have the black paint on the bottom with the yellow paint over top for the eyes, and that all looks good. Little orange paint on the top and on the back, that looks good. Die cast here in the chest. I got a big chip on my red paint, if you can see right above that yellow square on the red. Huge paint chip. And he has a bit of a beauty mark paint chip on his face. You can see right below his right eye, so right in there. So that's a bit of a bummer also. But um, where the paint is, is, is stuck on, it's, it looks really good. It's just that we have a bit of a problem with it uh, remaining stuck on. And that just came undone. It's okay, we'll get back to it. Uh, head itself is on a ball peg. Limited articulation down to there not really any up at all and then you get the swivel but once you go past a certain point in the swivel the back part of the head comes up over the shoulder which makes him look down so you're pretty limited in what you can do with his head so to speak waist swivel it's you get the full range but you only get really that much before you start to really push against it and create a lot of tension but i don't think you need much more than this to pull off most poses that you want to pull off so i think ultimately that's fine we have a hinge inside the torso for the shoulder which comes out to a ball peg so you get the full swivel but you only get the arm really up to there before it pops off so once again uh, not the best not the worst but not the best let's see if we can't get this there we go bicep swivel uh, we saw the elbow range when it works properly when it doesn't work properly that's about the, the extent of it and no wrist swivel so that's a bit of a bummer, and no real reason why it couldn't be there. And then we got some hollowness up in there, too. 
And that's the only real hollowness I see aside from that, but that kind of has to be like that. So we'll give them a pass there. T-jointed ball joints for, for hips, and you get out to there. That works fine. Forward to here. This piece, I think, is die cast. This upper piece, I can't, I can't really tell. Because, like, it's a different finish. I'm guessing it's die cast. I think it is. And then the lower piece is plastic. Uh, thigh swivel is built in here, and then you get a knee swivel as well. Uh, knees on a ball peg get you a crazy range, uh, but it is a ball peg. And then we had down here a ball peg for the foot, so you get an ankle tilt all the way down. And even the slightest bit up. And then the rocker is at the ball peg, uh, so that all works well as well the yellow and blue finish on the legs looks great like really really good a couple of sprue marks here on the legs which are a little distracting but I, I you know i think it's just distracting under the lights and looking at it this close i think on a shelf it'd be fine and i also wish that these were able to come down a bit more and add more so he stands fine but i've, I've noticed myself wanting to rotate this to kind of give him some extra height and then once you do that, he really can't stand. I mean, he can, but you got to really work at it to balance him. Like so. I don't think that one counts, Robert. Otherwise, that's him. Size comparison-wise, there he is with leader one. So he's a little fella. You know. So just keep that in the back of your head. Let's get him transformed. This whole piece slides up. You can see it there on the back. It's down. It slides up. And then you want to rotate the arms and be careful that they don't pop off the ball pegs. Bring them down and you want the thumbs together the best you can. And he then holds uh, the front of the bike, or the wheel rather. Easy for me to say. There. For the lower body, uh, unplug these hip skirts here. They're on ball pegs. They'll rotate around in order for you to get the angle that you need for the hips up. And then you want to open this piece here, bend the knee. And I had this already closed from the last time I transformed. I just forgot to flip it open so you can have it down. Like if, if you want to hide that little bit of uh, gap there, you can have it down. Look how chewed up that piece of plastic is right there. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so you have it like this. Flip this around to the back. Flip that around to the back. And take the foot. Open up the muffler here. Rotate this all the way around, and then close. You gotta uh, kind of close the muffler while you're doing that, and then the exhaust pipe, and that'll close up tight like that. So let's do it for the other one. Uh, open this up. Let's pretend this was down. So we'll open this up, and we'll flip that down, and flip this back around onto itself. And we'll open up our foot area. Rotating our foot in. Adjusting this as need be in order to do so. You can see that this tab here will interlock there. And then the other, the rear tire goes into here and here. All right, so just cleaning them up, the uh, the blue pieces do tab in between the yellow pieces up here, but I would be careful because I have a feeling that that will chip the paint that's on there. But that's where they plug in, and you can kind of adjust these as need be. And then he has all of these uh, little various kickstands and whatnot. So that plugs in there. These plug into the shoulder and in there
There we go. And this axe slides in his uh, his backside, I think. But mine is tight like a tiger. It's not the best fit anyway, and it probably can sit a little better, but that's going to have to do for now. And then we have this piece. Oh, this is to plug him in to his stand. So that's it. Um, you know, it's fine. The transformation is actually kind of fun. Uh, and I think, you know what? I think I like this. I think it's reminiscent of it, and I think it does a good job pulling it off, and I think the transformation is pretty smooth. Only part that, that frustrates me a bit is um, this axe, for one. There might be a better way to do that, but I, I sure as heck can't figure it out. At least not right this second. Um, but I think that the only thing that they could, that this spins, let's see if it rolls. Get you guys say you don't think I'm lying to you. Rolls just fine. I think it does. I think it does a pretty good job, and I think the transformation is pretty fun. The only thing that, that irritates me is that you have to plug in these plastic bits into the paint that's on the die cast. That just seems like a recipe for disaster to me. But you know, the kickstand flips up or comes down, and all that. If my arms were right, it would it would even be better. But you know, it's it's not a bad it's not a bad thing. I don't think. I think it's pretty cool, and I think it I think it works. So I I, I, I dig this. So, final thoughts wise, he's he's pretty good. You know, the, obviously the first thing that he gets dinged for in my book is the misassembled uh, coming with two right arms. But, you know, that kind of stuff is going to happen. And it's it's an individual results will vary. And I'm going to contact my e-tailer of choice and they're going to replace it and it's not going to be a big deal. It's just frustrating to have to go through it, right? But I'm going to assume, and you know what they say about assuming or making assumptions, I'm going to assume that mine is a minority, a fluke, uh, you know, a just a fly-by-night situation and most of them came assembled correctly. So let's not hit him too hard for that. What we will hit him for is with the price point, I feel like there could have been more here. Um, I it's it's not bad. There is and Parts for me doesn't bother me, but I do feel like some more of it could have been put into it, like the kickstand, for instance, where you didn't need to plug in extra pieces at the price point. I feel like some of the articulation is a little hindered, like the head for one, no wrist swivel, stuff like that. I feel like that sort of stuff should come at the price point that this figure is at. So I do have to hit them there. I also, I have a fair amount of paint imperfections, and then I got the, the, the stressed plastic in that one area. It's on that, that hinge right there. Um, and I just don't feel like I should have to put up with that sort of stuff, not only from Bondi, but from the, the price point of any figure within this ballpark. I, I don't feel like that should be acceptable. But there's plenty of good things here. The transformation is really fun. Like I can see this being a figure that you can mess around with, just kind of have sitting by your by your nightstand and just pick him up and have a have a bit of a bit of a muck about, and then put him back and and then you know and relatively enjoy yourself. It's it's a fun toy to mess with. The articulation for the most part is pretty good, with the exception of the heads and hands. Uh, I, I could have used a bit more of an ankle rocker, but that might be me being greedy. I think that overall it's 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 pretty good. It has die cast in it. The paint uh, where it's not scratched is really beautiful. So uh, do I recommend this Psych Hill? Absolutely. I absolutely do. It's expensive. So just know that. It, it is expensive. I'm not sure if it's worth the money, but it's definitely a fun little toy to have and a, and a pretty spot on you know, visual look of him. He is a little a little short for my liking, but we, we know why that is, I think, for the most part. But I, I, I do I do like him, and I, I, I'm looking forward to getting a few more. I'm only going to get the the main GoBot 6, the Psych Hill, Coptor, Crasher. Crasher, I, a lot of people have been saying they won't make Crasher, um, but there's been interviews with uh, the folks behind this, uh, and, and they have alluded that Crasher. You, well, you'll probably see a black variant of the white Crasher coming. So, hopefully, that sums up those comments on the channel. And I'm sure there'll be other comments, but we'll talk about that here in a minute. And then, uh, you know, Turbo, and, and hopefully a little scooter. And then I'll, I'm then I'm done with these. I, that's all I wanted the main six. But yeah, I, I don't think he's bad. He's little and he's expensive. And outside of that, 
good to go. You know, sometimes the good things come in small packages, and I have to admit this is pretty good. I like this one better than I like the Leader One. So thanks for listening, thanks for watching. Until next time, take care, and stick around real quick for the skit. Now, this is not Psych Hill. It's Machine Robo Bike Robo, or whatever, which was the Japanese anime of the same the character designs for the most part. Totally separate thing, same character designs. Separate characterizations, that's why he's shorter and so forth. Now, the reason why I purposefully never called him that and only called him Psych Hill is because there is a variety of nerd that needs to feel smarter than you. I'm not that variety. I acknowledge that most people are smarter than me. I don't need to be the smartest guy in the room. That's not my bag. But they feel the need to let people know just how super smart they are. And they are super smart. Bunch of smarty pants is what they are. So I know they will have already commented calling me an idiot. And that he's not psycho. That he's bike robo or whatever. But here's the gag. I'm going to use their hateful comments for my podcast so that we can all have a laugh at their expense. So, like, everybody wins. I just wanted to lure them into my honey trap so they could call me an idiot without waiting around for the final thoughts to hear me say, I'm well aware of the information. I just bought this character, as many people have, to represent a character that meant something to me, not a character that I'm unfamiliar with. There are a lot of people buying these, and they're buying these for modern representations of the GoBot characters, even though that's not necessarily 100% their intention. But if you don't think that Action Toys isn't aware of an adult collector who would have a need for a GoBot representation, you, sir, are a moron. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Until next time, even you, you nasty little keyboard warrior you, take care.